Helldivers 2, Genshin Impact, Sewer Slide Squad Kills the Justice League, Warframe. What do these games all have in common? They're live service games. Live service games, or games as a service according to Wikipedia, means to provide video games or game content on a continuing revenue model. What does that mean? Basically, it is a game that is supposed to live on, designed to keep a consistent player base with regular content updates. You might find things like battle passes, microtransactions, login bonuses, and daily missions or challenges that make you want to boot up the game, even if it is just for 30 minutes. Now, at face value, this isn't the most awful model. I believe there is a place for games like this in the industry and that they can be enjoyable. As of late, though, gamers have expressed their disdain for live service games because so many major studios are trying to shoehorn this formula into their games in a way that either doesn't belong or doesn't feel fun. I've played many live service games like Honkai Star Rail, Genshin Impact, Black Desert Online, Warframe, and at one point or another, I have always taken a massive break from these games. The reason? They can start to feel like jobs or have high barriers to enjoying their content. Now, one could argue that developers aren't forcing you to log into Honkai Star Rail every day to use up your trailblaze power or Warframe to collect your daily bonus. But you can't deny that these games are designed to make you feel some sort of FOMO or commitment to logging in regularly to keep up with building your characters, following the story at the pace the developers have designed for you, and keeping up with expiring events. Honkai Star Rail is much more generous in this aspect as compared to Kitchen Impact. I find myself returning to this game far more often and enjoying myself more as some events can still be enjoyed later and you can save up to 2600 trailblaze power but my point still stands comparing helldivers 2 to these games might seem a bit unfair as well on the surface they are vastly different from each other still they are games that are designed with the business model of bringing players back with more content on a regular basis except Helldivers 2 is doing it in a way that I believe will keep players around for much, much longer. In fact, I will so boldly claim that Helldivers 2 might be one of the best games to come out of 2024. So far. I know many of you don't know me that well, but coming from me, that is saying a lot. When I watched the trailer for this game, I was just meh about it. I'm someone who's more into games centered around story, wasn't interested in the light extraction shooter themes, though I've played more than my fair share of Warframe, and I felt like its target audience being for men meant it wouldn't be my type of game. Boy was I wrong. In between streaming and recording other games, I have been fitting in as much liberty as I possibly can. If live service games are like jobs, then Helldivers 2 is a job I am begging to clock into. Why? Why does a game that seems to lack most of the things I look for in games and include things I tend to be exhausted by in other games keep dragging me in? Having me beg each and every one of my friends to log in and play with me. Is it the liberty? The democracy, team killing, invincible bugs, indestructible robots, or is it the beautiful biomes, team hugs, awesome explosions, and beautiful armor? It's all of it, including the fact that the battle pass in this game is extremely generous, has no set expiration yet, and is super easy to grind out. I wouldn't even call it grinding because just casually playing with some pals or a good team will have you unlocking everything you could want in no time. This is a game with a battle pass where you don't have to spend money to get the premium rewards unlocked. Just get enough super credits by simply playing the game, collecting loot, and you'll find yourself having enough to unlock and collect everything for free. 
The only reason you would really need to spend your money on this game's store is if you're simply too impatient or want to support the developers with your hard-earned cash. Speaking of cash, did I mention that this game is only $40? In a time where most games are $60 at best and $100 or more at worst, being able to spread democracy across the galaxy for the low, low fee of $40 is amazing. This is a game that values your time and your money. Even though it isn't a perfect release, it has garnered so much well-deserved love from the gaming community. You know how everyone complains about modern gaming and their bugs? Well, despite this game having quite a few, every mission we find something odd going on, people are far more willing to overlook it because it is playable and fun. Fun. A thing I feel as if most studios are missing when they create their games. If you're going to put your customer to work, keep us coming back, spending our precious lives on your product, you have to make sure we're having fun. There comes a necessary balance that needs to be respected. Punishments and rewards. The more objectives you complete in a mission, the more XP and medals you can earn. If you die, you drop your loot, but you can get it back if the circumstances permits it. If you complete your objective, but the entire team dies, you keep some rewards. There are plenty of difficulty levels you're free to explore, which are great to toggle when playing with fewer or less experienced players and vice versa. If you take a break from the game, you don't feel this urgent need to grind and keep up with the meta. This is a game where every player feels like they are doing real work spreading real democracy across this forsaken galaxy and every extraction leads us to a common goal liberation i could go on and on about everything this game does right it does live service right the only true complaint i have with the game is those robot missions hit differently compared to the bugs of the same difficulty that could be chucked up to a skill issue though i'm not sure i am sure that I'm not saying anything out of the ordinary. I've yet to see a single person who hates this game or has major issues with it. Perhaps they exist, but you could also chalk that up to a skill issue. What do you think? Is Helldivers 2 living up to the hype for you? Or are we all looking through rose-colored glasses that will soon fade? I want to dive into more discussion-type videos like this, so tell me what you think. I'll see you out there on the field, cadets.